Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In today's video, we're checking out Ubuntu on the Raspberry Pi. Let's get started. Now, if you are new to Linux or new to the Raspberry Pi, I would still recommend using Raspbian. Raspbian is a very easy operating system to learn and is officially supported for the Raspberry Pi. Now, if you do want to try something different out, fortunately, it is very easy to change your operating system back and forth. It's very easy to install something on a micro SD card. The only thing you have to worry about is preserving any data you have. Now, if your computer is set up anywhere similar to mine, I don't have a way to directly plug a micro SD or an SD card right into my computer. I use this Anchor 2-in-1 micro SD and SD card reader. It's 10 bucks and I've had it for a number of years and I've had zero issues with it. It's USB 3.0 so it's pretty quick and I'm quite fond of this little gadget. For some reason, the Raspberry Pi imager was not working for me. It would fail to verify the right to the micro SD card, so I do recommend heading over and getting Bellina Etcher. I'll leave a link to this in the description below. The next step is to head over to Ubuntu's website to download the proper image for your Raspberry Pi. It's absolutely free and I will leave a link in the description below. They have images here for the Pi 2, the Pi 3, and the Pi 4. If you're using the Pi 4, I recommend picking up a 64-bit version of the operating system. From here, you have two different choices. You can either go with 18.04.4 LTS or 19.10. The big difference between the two, 19.10 will have more updated features. It is more cutting edge per se but it's only supported until July of 2020. 18.04 is the long-term solution, the long-term support, and that will be supported until April of 2023. So in a nutshell, if you install this on your Raspberry Pi and plan on leaving it on there for a number of years, go with 18.04. If you want the latest and greatest and maybe you're going to try another operating system out later, try 19.10. For the purposes of this video, I will be using 19.10, and that is just because I don't plan on using Ubuntu Server over the long haul. I like to switch up the operating system on my Raspberry Pi, I like to tinker around, so I don't necessarily sit on one operating system for a very long period. Once you've downloaded the image from Ubuntu, you've plugged in your micro SD card, boot up Etcher. From there, select the image that you just downloaded from Ubuntu and make sure you select the proper micro SD card. Don't accidentally select, don't be like me and accidentally select a portable hard drive and write the image to the hard drive. Make sure you select the proper micro SD card from your list and then click flash. Once Etcher has finished flashing the image onto a micro SD card, Remove the micro SD card from your computer, plug it into your Raspberry Pi, and fire up the Raspberry Pi. The initial boot will take a bit of time, so please have some patience here. At some point, you will make it into a login screen where it says Ubuntu Login. Both the username and password is simply Ubuntu. If you want Ubuntu to have a standard desktop environment, then the next step is to make sure everything is up to date. I'll leave this command in the description below so you can just copy and paste it if you want. This process may or may not take a lot of time depending on a number of factors, so please be patient with this step. Also for this step, make sure that your Raspberry Pi is connected to the network. I completely forgot to do this and was trying to figure out why everything was failing. So make sure it is connected and then everything should be smooth sailing. All right, so that about does it for this video. We downloaded Ubuntu, we put it on a micro SD card, put it in the Raspberry Pi and made sure everything is up to date. At this point, the Raspberry Pi is running Ubuntu and everything looks to be okay. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. If you don't want me to leave you high and dry and want me to continue on, leave a like, hit the subscribe button. Let's throw a desktop environment on this. So to install Mate, I will leave the code in the description below. Feel free to copy and paste that. It's right there on the bottom of the screen. I'm just going to hit enter here, provided I didn't misspell anything, and we should be good to go. At some point during your installation, it will prompt you to select a display manager. It'll give you two options, GDM3 and LightDM. If you want something straightforward that's just going to work easily, select GDM3. If you're more concerned about performance and want something a little more lightweight, you can select LightDM. However, there are some additional steps you will have to do to configure things properly. 
I do recommend using GDM3 at this point. Once everything is done installing, just type in sudo reboot, reboot the Raspberry Pi and it should automatically boot up into Ubuntu Mate. The initial boot up should take a little bit of time, so be patient. You'll probably end up seeing a flashing cursor on the screen and not much else for a while. If you are patient, you'll probably end up being greeted with this login screen here. On the main menu as well, make sure you select the proper desktop version. So if you want to select Mate or Mate or M-A-T-E, whatever you want to call it, just make sure you select it. That way, when you boot up into the desktop environment, it is the correct one. And just like that, Ubuntu Mate is up and running. Everything looks great here. The speed is actually a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I thought it might be a little bogged down, but everything here seems to be in pretty good shape. Now at idle, here is what I'm currently using for system resources. RAM right now at idle is using 936 megabytes, 937 megabytes of 3.7 gigs. So this is a four gigabyte version of the Raspberry Pi that I'm currently running. If you have a one gig version, pretty much all of your RAM will be dedicated simply to running the OS and that's it. Now the CPU usage is actually pretty low. It's lower than I thought it was going to be. My main concern here is the RAM. So 930 megabytes plus just to run the OS does not give you a lot of breathing room, especially if you're not using the four gigabyte version of the Raspberry Pi 4. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with how Ubuntu Mate is running on the Pi 4. It kind of exceeded my expectations considering Ubuntu Mate isn't officially released yet for the Pi 4. This is a more or less forced version of Ubuntu Mate. Uh, the official release isn't out just yet. You can get it for the Pi 2 and 3, but not for the Pi 4. So stay tuned for that because it'll be a much simpler install, a much more straightforward install, and hopefully even better performance. If you are looking for even more performance and you're dead set for using Ubuntu, take a look at the XFCE version, and I will leave that in the description below because it is an even lighter version of the distribution. Well, a lighter desktop environment, I would say, of Ubuntu. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.